I have put 500 hours into Soul Mask, well at least according to Steam, and in this video we will go over my entire journey in the series I made on the Aztec survival game and my opinion on the entirety of Soul Mask. I think the best way to do this is to go through the entire journey and tell stories of the good times and the bad. I remember starting out and being super damn excited about the game. I even started a full playthrough more than once because the first time I started the series my save file corrupted and I had to start again. But because I loved the game so much it really didn't bother me at all at the time, it kind of did me a favour. Luckily, it was just before a massive update to the game, which allowed us to start a series with a load of new additions. More tribesmen followers, more buildings, bug fixes, game additions, and more came at this time. And this was two months ago. At this point, do me a favor, ladies and gents, and throw up a like if you do enjoy my content. It really helps me out. So I guess we should start at the beginning. The beginning of the complete Soul Mask series. For some fucked up reason, I started this second playthrough with hope that it wouldn't happen again. And honestly, I could just shit on the entire game because of the issues that I've had. But I'm really not going to. I'll have my moments most likely. Most of you know me that I am a miserable bastard at the best of times. So I'll probably deviate at some point. But in the start of the series, we had a firm grasp on what needed to be done. We've done it before. We gathered what we needed to, built our first outpost to start gathering NPCs and everything was going well. Once I managed to get a foothold, we needed to grab up some NPCs to get the ball rolling. I was really excited as I was getting a lot of support from you guys and people were really starting to enjoy the series. I remember getting really happy about finding my first NPC with life leech and really high gauntlet proficiencies. At this point, we actually got a really early kill on a saber tooth boss wearing nothing but standard flint tribe gear and bone weapons. This will be the last time that we had fun fighting a boss. You all know how it goes from here. Now this is where shit started to hit the fan on the series when it came to building my favorite and most loved part of soul mask i tried to build a base over water on top of a waterfall and it came with so many issues that by the end of it i just gave up on the top of the waterfall completely npcs were drowning being murdered by serial killer fish and invasions would not even turn up and i was just stuck with a big box at the top of the bloody screen the pathing of the npcs on water is horrible even more so than just the first level base but i still tried my best to get it done between episode four and five i actually built at the bottom of the waterfall instead which had its own issues Elite spawns block in one direction and pillars not working properly at this point. So I changed it up a bit and went to figure out if uncrafting was any good in the game. It turned out to be pretty good actually. A lot of you were saying it's a waste of time to just gather the resources, but I actually found it quite lucrative after clearing out a lot of places and just breaking it down automatically. Even though I didn't realize I didn't have to bloody sit at the station at the time. Now we get to the Fog Frog, and the first and last time Kulan Games actually posted one of my videos on their feed on Steam. And the first time I tried to RP a story at the beginning and the end of the boss fight. Some of you liked it, some of you hated it, some of you were greedy fuckers and wanted both. Thanks guys. It ended up with the NPCs not dodging poison clouds and all dying horrible deaths, and me being me, forgot to put them in the mysterious stone table, so we bloody lost them all. Right, at this point, it really started to go to shit. We actually lost all of our NPCs for zero reason, no tribe log deaths, and I think I actually took it pretty well, considering. I logged in and literally every single one of my tribesmen are dead. All of the weapon crafters we got with the good perks and everything, they're all dead, everything's gone. I lost everything. And not having a mysterious stone tablet still was a big issue. So I went and soloed the Slayer X and got everything we needed. Now this is where things started getting better again. I had an absolute blast building the Star Fortress and you guys all loved it too. It was one of the highest viewed videos of the series. It seems you guys like me actually going through a build step by step and even though Soul Mask has its flaws with overlapping parts and zero decorations, I really enjoyed this part of the playthrough. And because you guys loved this so much, I actually did another one. Our first portal outpost build. That also did really well. And I actually had no issues here and the build went really well. I was still really enjoying the building system in Soul Mask. It is definitely one of its strongest areas to be honest, even though it has a long way to go. Right. Here now we stepped up our game to the bronze tier and went to go and grab a new mask, the Torch of Eternity. Basically making you immortal when you freeze yourself and when someone is as shit as me at the combat it's definitely something that was needed. At this point I really loved fighting the mechanical bosses, they really reminded me of old school MMO boss fights. And I actually look forward to clearing out the dungeons every time we came to one. Then we actually got our first invasion here and I got really cocky and they started to smash up stone foundations on walls in the starter area. Just running around the side of here. Oh God, they actually blow a hole. He's actually doing, this one's doing damage to the walls. He's actually inside. I kind of thought this was a little bit bullshit, but they have Jaguars there too, so it is what it is. We then ended up setting up our iron production here in our farms and our first dive into the poison filled ruin. I still really enjoyed the mechanical bosses and the holy ruins areas. It was one of the things keeping me going as well as the building and gathering of resources. Plus I really loved the NPC management in the game. One of the problems we were getting here was not having scouts pop up on the map. So I had to manually find them, which actually sucked more than you know. Our poison proof production started at this point and all of our iron armor was crafted. I do really love the different environmental protections you need to have and use in this game and all the different kinds of environmental damage you can get 
really adds a nice touch. We cleared and got the restrictive module for the mimicry mode of the Torch of Eternity. Now we get back to what I love about Soul Mask, the building and the aesthetic of the building pieces. Yeah, as I said, it has its issues, but for the most part, it's a really good system to work with. And they have many more updates on that particular part coming in September, so we got that to look forward to. At this point, we needed to kill a few bosses to progress, so both episode 15 and 16 were killing the Vajra Ape, who I absolutely fucking hate with a passion the most broken boss in the game as we will discuss later and I will fucking discuss it. The videos here didn't really do well. I'm not sure why. Maybe the RP was not good enough. Maybe it was because there were two episodes in a row that were pretty much the same. It was at the time where I discovered using archers only to kill bosses except for the fog frog really works well on the first tier of bosses so i guess i overused them and it kept them at a distance from some of the mechanics which helped a lot at the beginning after the shit show that was the eight boss i wanted to chill out and build something so i started working on my automatic iron ingot farm which worked but only if i stayed in the base as soon as i teleported out the npcs fucking insta died like they just gave up on life because the magnificent sovereign took a break that was really bloody annoying and was the beginning of the end for NPCs during this playthrough. I actually had a few issues here in between episodes, crashes, NPC pathing into instant death, and storage boxes started to disappear randomly. I had a few episodes recorded and done here, but did not release them because of all the issues that were happening in them, and I didn't want to keep making videos of me just complaining about shit. So I didn't release them and instead waited until the issues were fixed in a bug fix update, and they were. We then cleared the Wilderness Mask Ruin and got it without too much hassle. I started to realize how repetitive the mechanical bosses started to get at this point, and after the update, it brought its own issues. Boxes not in the right place, bosses in the hallway, sub-bosses where bosses should be, and items completely missing from the ruins. Let's just say this one got frustrating. And as always, when I have a shit episode of me getting angry, I build something. And this time we extended the Star Fortress to have electricity building wings to put windmills on and started to get into the final stages of the game. I actually really love the power system in this game and I cannot fault it at all. Really well done in my opinion. Now at this point, I needed a new mount. So I went and got an ostrich to open up the portals in the desert so we could get around easier and stop our mounts dying of red. Radiation. The egg hatching was a fucking nightmare. I couldn't get the right temperature at all. Spent an hour trying to get the right temperature to hatch them and then realized the fucking heaters had several settings and all I needed to do was bloody change it. What a twat. I mean, surely that would be like cooking it. Heat 84 degrees. Okay. So you're going to guess what happened next? I did another build video. The Star Fortress was built out and it was amazing. We completed it with a complete private wing for myself and I really loved how it turned out again. Another testament to how well done the building system is in Soul Mask. Always had a lot of fun with these episodes and in the game in general. In this episode, I really lost my shit. This boss drove me to the point of nearly quitting it and not because it was hard, but because it was broken. I swore and raged my way through an hour of fighting the damn berserk Verger 8. He's going to throw the... F a fucking Christ on a merry fucking bicycle, Jesus cunt, bullshit cunt, fuck. Not knowing because they didn't say shit about it, not confirmed anyway, we kinda had an idea, but the more people you bring to a boss fight, the harder it is, which in my opinion is kinda bullshit. This ain't Elden Ring, it's a bloody survival game. I really got so annoyed that I almost quit the game here and there. The bosses have clunky mechanics, shitty movements, laggy animations, teleportation, and just general bullfuckery that almost drove me insane. And this goes for a lot of bosses. It's just the other bosses don't have mechanics that heal them halfway up when you cannot knock them off a fucking tree, or just crashing for shits and giggles. So I actually thought I'd be a masochist here and fight the bullbag vulture here, and we fought both the normal and berserk version. I crashed, it teleported, lagged, exploded. Guys, kill him. He's almost dead, man. We don't need to do much more. We don't need to do much more. And I'm lagging again. It fucking crashed! Oh my god! Right, we're going back in and we're going to see... Like, this is fucking really starting to get on my nerves, like, a lot. The crashing has been happening the past couple of days really badly. He's going to either be dead and we didn't get the unlock. Or everything's going to be dead and it didn't really matter in the first place. But at least this time the boss is just easy so it wasn't that much of an issue. I actually crashed and the bloody thing was killed by my NPCs. Luckily, we still got credit and I could still get his head. Right, here it is where I basically just gave up. So I logged in today and as you can see in our prime base fucking location... There is absolutely fucking nothing left of the entire Star Fortress build. There's nothing left. All we have left are two NPCs and some mounts. Everything else is fucking dead and disappeared. Lost to the world after the latest fucking update. Between episode 24 and 25, lots of storage boxes started disappearing. Lots of them. Not just one or two here and there. We lost all of them. I lost all my resources, all the gathered equipment and weapons, and all the special items that were gathered from ruins and bosses. 
They all just vanished. Nothing in the tribe log. No evidence of them ever even being there. So I had to farm it again. I made a video on this and it was set to release a few days ago. But then I logged in the game the next day and my entire base was literally gone completely. No tribe log, no issues on a bonfire, nothing. Just fucking gone and was left with nothing but two NPCs who then died quickly anyway in a trap later on. I thought, you know what? We are so close to finishing. I just regathered all the lost resources and built a new base in the snow biome called the Ice Fortress and spent a few days of endless play to get back to that point. I even got so pissed off, I put all the difficulty sliders to max and thought, fuck it, I'm just going to go for it. And in episode 25, I actually got over the fact that I lost everything and was actually really happy because I got to build a cool looking base and most of you really liked the Ice Fortress. It came out really well and I was back on top and ready to complete Soul Mark. However, how fucking ever. After episode 25, I logged in and everything had just disappeared again. But not like last time. This time it waited for me to log in before literally fucking demolishing itself in front of my eyes. Raining rocks and lost dreams everywhere. I was actually fucking done at this point. I was thinking about making another video on what the fuck happened, but I just literally gave up on it. I couldn't do it again. I lost too damn much already. And yes, I know it's early access. Yes, I know, blah, 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 blah. All the comments on how it's my fault for caring too much. I honestly couldn't give two flying fuck rabbits if I cared too much. I did, and I ended up giving up. Which is a shame, because this game could have been fucking awesome, and it could still be. With all the new building stuff coming out and all the new mechanics, but I don't know if it's too late now or not for me. Hopefully not, because I want to build a Stargate Atlantis construction out of the new parts, and I think I will really enjoy that, but the Soul Mask series is over. I'm just not doing it again. Maybe in the future when a really big update comes out or the full release, but for now, I'm done with the complete Soul Mask series. But then you know what happens when something really pisses me off. In the last episode, I built a pyramid, and it's fucking awesome it was a dedication to the wife because she loves pyramids i came i saw i conquered win-win and here is where we stand the game is amazing in its own right but it has so many issues npc pathing building overlapping buggy bosses repetitive ruin gameplay mechanical bosses are copy pasted throughout and yes i loved them at the start but by the end even i started to get bored of it there were issues with the pvp servers always being wiped new pvp servers added just killing off servers over and over again a kind of a developmental choice that was really bad but i would like to add at this point that since i put the video out on the disappearing base and the issues i've been having where ruins were completely out of whack with the chests and bosses being in the wrong location NPCs disappearing and all other issues we talked about so far the developers actually contacted me to find out all the information on my world save that could have caused these issues even though some of these issues other players have encountered it's been one thing here and one thing there for different people not everything on a single save so I'll be passing my save file over to the developers so they can check it out and see what the issues could be so it can be fixed which is absolutely amazing. I honestly haven't had anything like that happen before, so it really was a breath of fresh air, and it does give kudos to the actual developers. So I guess after all this bullshit, what I really want to say is, it's definitely worth playing. It's definitely worth waiting to see how it does at launch after early access, and I won't be leaving the game completely, because I love building in it, and will continue to make build videos for it for a long time. Yeah, I had issues. Yeah, I lost everything in the end. But at the end of the day, it is early access and things can only get better. The developers are actually working hard to give the best experience possible and I think eventually this game will be one to play after a few updates. I know I haven't really talked that much about PvP or anything like that because my experience with it was just cheaters and dead servers and I didn't play much of it at all. I'll leave that to people who understand that side of the game better. But I will say the constant wiping of servers and adding the new ones is definitely not the way to go if you want to keep a player base. And with that... I want to thank you all for watching and keep an eye out for all your survival gaming content. Remember to like and sub if you did enjoy the video. Fly safe and avoid local chat scams. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up. It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror.